It's game 10 of championship weekends here in Hot Springs, and we've got a good one on tap for the 4A boys game as we've got Morlton taking on the Mills Comets right here at Bank OZK Arena. Hello everyone, I'm RJ Honk along with Bobby Swafford for today's action. And Bobby, you couldn't ask for a better 4A game between Morlton and Mills. There's gonna be a lot of high flying hoops in this one. Yeah, you're exactly right. Two teams that are playing extremely well at the right time of the season. And a lot of people are wondering like, hey, where's Magnolia? Well, those devil dogs of Morlton are the ones who knocked off the two-time defending state champion into the 54 game winning streak and they've got some big time talent including an Arkansas commit yeah and we're going to get more into that but before we do let's go and go ahead and look at the bracket on how they got to this point because you know you were talking a little bit about that Magnolia team and a lot of people said well Magnolia is a, a shoe in for the finals and then Morlton who was unranked in the preseason kind of came out of nowhere they lost to this Mills team in the quarterfinals last year but they're looking to get revenge today. Yeah, they had the luxury of playing a state tournament at home. That always helps. They had a first run by, but you see they eat past Monticello and then handle business against Magnolia. But for Mills, also had a first run by. A really nip and tuck game against Farmington in the quarterfinals. Only led the Cardinals by a point at the half, but ran away with it in the second half. Then they handled business in a pretty co tightly contested contest against Blyville and Mills here in Hot Springs for the fifth consecutive year. Well, let's talk about those Mills Comets and really led by Jakari Livingston, who is just an all-around great basketball player for this Comet team. Yeah, he kind of does it all. You see 17 points, averages about five rebounds a game as well. The 6'4 senior is going to be called upon to get it done, not only offensively, because they're going to have to score points, but he's going to have to do some work on the other end. And on the other side, when you look at Morlton, a Razorback commitment and Joseph Pinion, who is the do-it-all player for the Devil Dogs. Yeah, he's the straw that stirs the drink. 17 points, seven rebounds, also pitches in three assists. He can kind of do it all. He's a volume shooter. He's going to get his shots up. Mills are probably going to run one, maybe two defenders at him to try to try to slow down number one for Morrison. We've got probably one of the largest crowds that we've seen so far here at the championships. And nobody's, be... nobody's left in Morrison. No. There is a lot of maroon and gray over there. <laughs> it's a lot of folks here, and we are set to give you all the action. When we come back, we'll have the starting laps of this 4A Boys State Championship game as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Throughout the years of exploring Arkansas, we've taken you to quite a few awe-inspiring places, mainly as seen at ground level. But exploring all those natural wonders and iconic landmarks takes on a whole new exhilarating perspective from a bird's eye view. Welcome to Exploring Arkansas from Above. We'll showcase the natural state like never before. Join us for the high adventure in 2021. Arkansas PBS offers the inspiration you need to do it yourself with a wide variety of programs to satisfy the innovator in you. From sewing to gardening to home improvement and cooking, we have everything to fulfill your DIY needs. Tune in every Saturday for your fix of DIY programs only on Arkansas PBS. every memory from that first car to your first home to your first child and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring for everything that matters most to you and your family there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love your local farm bureau insurance agent farm bureau insurance real service real people here at Bank OZK Arena in Hot Springs, Arkansas. It's the Mills Comets taking on the Morrison Devil Dogs in the Class 4A Boys 
state championship games and the starting lines are being announced now so let's get to it and uh, we will first start with the mills comments where they are led by jakari livingston who we talked about 17 points a game six rebounds he's a 6-4 senior forward he's followed by javian guy king also a top recruit in the in the country really who stands at 6-6 he's a forward and only a junior averaging 13 points a game the rest of the lineup looks like this you've got joseph bell who's averaging 11 points QJ King, who is a sophomore center at 5'7", and then Dylan Parks, a 5'7 freshman guard, gets the start for Mills. As for Morrillton, their lineup has Joseph Pinion, who we talked about, is committed to the University of Arkansas, averaging 17 points a game, followed by Darius Allison, Brock Hendricks, Kevon Moore, Devin Foster. By the way, Brock Hendricks, who we talked about, uh, or haven't really talked much about, he was actually an All-Stater last year yeah. for CAC. Yeah, averages 11 points a game. And you mentioned those players for Mills, four players in double figures. And so that, that anytime you see that at the high school level, they distribute the basketball evenly, but they get up and down, and they're looking to score a lot of points. It's been since 1991 that Morrillton has won a state championship. As for Mills, they were co-champions last year, but the outright champion in 2017. A really impressive thing about Mills is Raymond Cooper, the head coach, he's got a winning percentage of 77% over the last 10 years. Yeah, they know the, the path to Hot Springs. There's no doubt about that. 17 and 18, they get to the 5A state championship game, beat Parkview, then lost to Parkview and those in the last two seasons. In the 4A state championship, lost to Magnolia a couple years ago. Then last year, they didn't get the chance for revenge as that game was, I guess we would call COVID it, it, it out. Morrillton comes in 20 and 6 on the season, while Mills 25 and 4, and that is the tail of the tape here in Hot Springs. Bobby, real quick, before we get going, what's some keys to the games for both these teams? Now, I think if you're Mills, you've got to just go with what brought you here. That's up-tempo pace, have an evenly distributed production. But Livingston and Javion Guy King are going to have to get the points. They average about 30. If they can get to that number or higher, they got a good chance to win. And for Morrillton, really, it's all about number one, Joseph Pinion. He's going to be the guy that takes the shots. You've got to get him going. 17 points. And maybe an X factor if you're looking for one, see what kind of production Henry Cowles gets for Morrillton coming off the bench. 6'10", uh, he's a junior. We'll see if he can come in and provide a spark on the inside. There's Raymond Cooper, the head basketball coach for Mills. He's very cool, calm, and collective this time of year. Had a good conversation with him prior to the ball game. And he said it was one of the more challenging years that he's had as a basketball coach after the loss of his son and dealing, dealing with all the COVID issues. They're back here in Hot Springs. Jumping center, you've got Pinion versus Joseph Bell, and you're going to have to re-jump it at center court. Yep. They jumped, and the referee didn't throw the ball. That's the problem. And the tip is controlled by Mills as JV and Guy King will get it over to QJ King and working on the left side here's a runner in the lane and thrown up by Jakari Livingston and he's fouled and he'll head to the free throw line to shoot two boy Jakari Livingston really fast player on the on the court yeah I like the aggressiveness to start we finally saw it in the 4A girls game earlier today a lot of teams were slow to start the game Harrison and both Farmington got up and down, attacked the basket, and that's why I like Livingston try, try to get to the rim early and pick up the pace, and more importantly, calm his team down. Second free throws in the air and good. It doesn't matter how many times you've been here, there's always some nerves when the ball goes up in the state title game. You're going to see full court pressure by the Mills Comets as they're going to work it into the front court goes Morrillton. Here's Pinion on the left baseline. Kicks it back out top side. Working it quickly, they go. Now here's a stop and pop in the lane. Nice job that time by Morrillton's Brock Hendricks. Yep, nice jump stop, composed himself. Got the shot fake, got the defender in the air and used the window to get the deuce. Mills with the basketball as Guy King works it right side in the hands of Livingston. He'll go high with the basketball, gets his own rebound, puts it back up, still in the air, and coming down with it's gonna be Morrillton. Nice job by Morrillton, even though Livingston was able to get into the painted area. Nice contested defense. Foster with the basketball, goes right side to Allison, right in front of the Mills. 
bench as they give it off left side to Hendricks. Now back out to Pinion. Working it back to Allison in the lane. Spin move with the right hand. Goes up, no good. And it's pulled in by Mills. Working fast now is King. Back top side to Guy King for three. It's no good. Skies for the rebound. And coming down with it is going to be Moralton's Darius Allison. They go back left side. In the hands of Moore. 6.24 to play here in the first quarter. Moralton on top, 2-1. to one. Here's Foster getting it back down low to Allison. Allison going to drive, put up a wild shot. No foul called. A lot of and contact, but no call. Coming down with it was King. Works it to Parks. Parks puts up the shot. We've got an offensive foul. It's headed back the other way. Yeah, they're letting them play early on. Kind of dipped the shoulder there. And anytime you do that, they're going to get the offensive call. You look right here on the replay, and he was set up nicely, and the offensive foul is going to be called every time on that. They work it left side over to Hendricks. Get into the front court to Allison. Back top side to Moore. They swing it right side now into the hands of Pinion. Pinion's going to pull up for three. It's off the front of the iron, no good. And rebounds pulled in by Mills. Swing it to the top to Livingston, then back over to the left to King. Down to 5.30 to play here in the first quarter. Parks just handing it off over to Guy King. They're going to work it around till they can find their penetration point. Back over to King. Swings it to the corner. DeBell for three. It's nothing but, a, the, but the bottom of the net. Nice ball rotation to work it around, as you mentioned. Trying to get the look that they wanted. Bell wide open in the corner. Buries the triple. Two-point lead for Mills. 5.04 to play here in the first quarter. Bounce pass goes right side into the hands of Foster. Foster's got it back by the midcourt strike. Trying to get some separation. One thing about this Mills team, they play really, really good defense. Yeah, they're, they're pushing it out for the full length of the floor as Here's well. Hendricks nice off day. the glass. He's going to be fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line to shoot one. Yeah, you see the excitement there from Hendricks. He's got all four points for the Devil Dogs. A nice, strong take. Gets the hit off the glass for two. That's a great move by Brock Hendricks, who... Came into the ball game averaging 11.6 points per game. Second leading score for the Devil Dogs, and he's getting it done early. And I guess we're going to have a free throw violation before he even gets it out of his hand. And Hendricks is saying that the official threw him the basketball, so he should have been able to go. Here's Mills now. We'll get a clarification on that here momentarily. Mills with the ball. With it is Allen. It goes back top side to Jared Giddens, who just checked in the ball game. Back to Allen now. Allen on the right wing. Going to drive in. Put it up from just inside the free throw line. He misses that shot as it was too hard. And Moulton's going to work quickly now. With the basketball for Moulton is Allison. They go back left side to Pinion. Down to the left corner for threes, Hendricks. And it's off the back of the iron, no good. Rebounds taken by Moralton, then deflected away into the hands of Mills. You know, I like the extra pass from Pinion, but that was one of the cleaner looks he was going to get, maybe pull that three from the left wing. Instead, he passes it one more time to Hendricks, who missed the triple from the corner. Kendrick gets into the hands of Javian Guy King. He floats in the lane, is able to knock it down. And Mills back out to a 6-4 to four lead. Yeah, really good strong take there by Guy King, able to finish at the 10. And slow things down at the midcourt stripe. That goes Moralton. Devin Foster with the basketball. Brings it back topside to Pinion. Swings it left side to Hendricks. Back over to Pinion. Pinion lost the handle on it. It's going to go out of bounds and stay with Moralton, and that'll bring us to our first media timeout. 3.16 to play here in the first quarter. It's 6-4, to four, Mills on top. Well, I said that we're going to take a media. There we go. There's the media. And you're watching the Centennial Bank High School Basketball Championships in Arkansas PBS Sports.
Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. You know, I think sports are really big to a lot of people. And because it's an important part of our fabric in our community, and the one good thing about what I've seen is it's high quality production. You know, you think of the small communities all over Arkansas, it's a big deal that they can turn on the TV or DVR or whatever and know they're going to get a quality product. And so I think it just expands the, uh, the focus of what PBS is doing. You know, Arkansas PBS is doing a great job, and, and I think it's part of education. Here's a, review, a replay of that lane violation on Brock Hendricks, and they were saying that when the ball was in the hands of the free throw shooter that a player from Walton came off the box, and that was an illegal illegal free throw lane formation. So not, not everybody was set. Now here's a steal by Mills, moving quickly into the front court, and they're going to say no, the foul was before the shot, and going up with it was Jakari Livingston. You can support your team and join the basketball conversation on social media. Just use the hashtag. There it is on your screen, ARPBS Sports. So Mills will have it from the left side of the bucket. It's 6-4 to four Mills on top of Morrillton. Inbounds deflected and it's taken by Hendricks. He's playing well. His first five minutes of the contest has all four points from Morrillton. Now with the steal. Hendricks into the front court. Bounce pass goes left side to Foster. Going to put it in the hands of Allison now. Callis in the game for the first time now for the Devil Dogs. Nice cut by Pinion, and he's able to bank it off the glass. It's 6-6 six to six now. If the Arkansas commit gets his first points in the contest. They work it right side into Livington, Livingston's hands. They swing it back left now. Over to Kendrick. Back to the right side. That's out to Giddens. To the left corner. To Kendrick, he'll drive, puts it up with the left hand. It's an air ball, but it's picked up by Morrillton. Coming down with it was Darius Allison. Allison into the hands of Pinion on the right side. Bounce pass down low to Hendricks. He puts it up, no good, gets his own rebound, sticks it back up, and then Mills comes down with a defensive rebound. Yeah, nice job to converge on the big 6'10 forward for Morrillton. He's got the height advantage, but couldn't take advantage. JV and Guy King with the basketball. Under two to play here in the first quarter. We've got a tie ball game. Mills going to hold on to the ball to take some time off that clock. And swing it left side into the hands of Guy King. Now top of the key over to Livingston. Back to the corner for three. It's off the side of the backboard. It's no good. Here comes Pinion now to Hendricks. In the lane, Eurostep puts it up, no good. As coming down with it is Guy King. It's a two-on-one break, but then it's stolen away by Morrillton. As coming up with it was Foster. Yeah, really nice job defensively. You force him to use the offhand and allow the defender behind him as Pinion knocks down the mid-range jumper. Well, that was a floater from the free throw line to give Morrillton a two-point lead. That's a pretty smooth stroke there by Pinion. That was created by the defense on the other end. JV and Guy King with the basketball as we're under a minute to play now. Right side they work it to Giddens. Back left side. Out to Marcus Kendrick. Achilles Ringo in the ball game for Mills as he swings it left side to Guy King for three from the left corner. And most everything that Mills had been able to get going early in this first period was going towards the basket. Guy King getting things done from the perimeter. Here's Hendricks now as stands in front of the jump circles. We've got 30 seconds to play in this one. Mills with a one point lead as Darius Allison's got it. Goes back right side to Hendricks. They swing it around the perimeter, this time over to the hands of Allison. Back to Pinion. Pinion's going to pull up from just beyond the free throw line. Misses that shot, coming down with it's Guy King. Working quickly now. They go up the left side, and that's deflected out of bounds. How about Darius Allison right there? Skying and blocking it out. Allison helped force the turnover last time down, and 
They're able to get the track down block from behind. Well, you can see Darius Allison setting up for that one. He saw him coming up, was going to sky for it, and then he just was able to swat it back into the first row. Inbound pass comes over to Livingston. He's on the wing down to three seconds. Livingston's going to pull up for three, and it's no good. It'll be an air ball. And as we've completed one quarter of play, Mills nine, Moralton eight, and you're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Cherokee Nation, our people, our culture, our history, our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect. That's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. Be the first to know what's happening at Arkansas PBS and get the latest sports updates. All you have to do is download the Engage Arkansas PBS app today for exclusive content. Walton with the basketball as we start the second quarter of play and they trail by one point to Mills. As Pinion pulls up for three, it's too hard off the back of the iron and pulled in by Mills. It looked or like Pinion was fully committed to pulling that trigger. And we've got to travel with the basketball as traveling was Caleb Allen. And so Morrillton gets the basketball back. It's my favorite chant right there. It's so deep and philosophical. <laughs> you can't do that. I figured you'd like the money whenever somebody fouls out when they hit the road jack. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that has a little class to it. Does it? But you can't do that? Come on. Be better. Be original. Once again. That's a that's a traditional <laughs> chant. I know. <laughs> it's just it's the little things, Bobby. I know. It's the little things. All right. It's game number ten for us all this weekend. <laughs> it is. As the twelve foot jumpers up and no good. There's a foul. I know they're going to just say it went out of bounds, and it'll be Borlton basketball. Full court press is on by Mills. They've done that the entire game. As Brock Hendricks is going to bring it up for the Devil Dogs. Had a pretty good pace to this contest. Here's Shots Pinion. just aren't going down. Boy, Pinion air balls a three-pointer, but Morton recovers, puts up the shot, and he's fouled. And that time for the Devil Dogs getting that shot up was Nevin Williams who just checked in the ball game. Nice job by Williams. The spin just seemed off of there for Pinion. Way off the mark, but Nevin Williams right there gets the air ball and chance to put Morton back in front at the foul line. And the first free throw is good to tie to the ball game. This free Free throw could give him the lead as he hits it off the back of the iron. No good, so we'll stay tied at nine. Working quickly is King into the front court. Goes right side into the hands of King. Now back left. Now cross court pass is going to go down low, and 
in the hands of Livingston who missed the easy lay-in. And now it's going to be taken by Hendricks. Hendricks in the front court. Gets it off over to Foster. Back to Hendricks. Hendricks in the lane. Puts up the shot and he's fouled. And he'll head to the line to shoot two. Hendricks has been the spark plug for this Morrillton offense so far. He's got four of their nine. A chance to get back to the foul line. Team shooting it very well from the floor. Moralton 29%, Mills just 23%. First free throws up and no good. Checking in the ball game for Mills is going to be Larry Miller. It's kind of been the trend though over the weekend. You take the last game out of it. Poor shooting on both sides. Second free throws up and good. As checking back in for Mills, it's going to be JV and Guy King. Of course, the defenses have a lot to do with that. We are in the state championship games after all. You know, I was talking to a coach um, just prior to the first game today, and he said that it makes a big difference that they don't get to have a shoot around yep. in this arena anymore. He said, you know, we're used to playing in big arenas, but this one, the depth perception behind the goals, because you don't really have fans back there, really throws you off. Yep. Obviously, this year they didn't get the chance to have those shoot arounds because of COVID, having to clean the arena, everything that goes along with that. Here's King with the basketball. Goes into the corner to Guy King. Now back in the lane to King. Lost the handle on it. Goes back top side to Allen. Back to King on the right side. 5.53 to play here in the first half as Bolton leads 10 to 9. King with the basketball, goes back top side to Livingston. Back to King, thought about a three. Nice fake, goes back over to Livingston with the right hand. He's able to make it a go, and it's 11 to 10 now. Well, Livingston was really active early on for Mills. Calmed down a bit, hasn't attacked quite as much. Good to see him go hard at the glass there. Here's Pinion bringing the ball into the front court for Morrillton. Down by one. With the basketball is Foster. Goes back to Hendricks on the right side. Working into the free throw line. Into the hands of Cowles. And he's going to be, he's going to take a blocking foul and head to the free throw line to shoot two. Henry Cowles, the big center for Morrillton, is going to head to the free throw line to shoot two. And you see right here, Fender was never set. Yeah, Larry Miller was moving. Never completely got in front of Cowles. That's why he didn't get the benefit of the call. This free throw is good to tie the ball game. Now checking in for Morrillton is going to be Byron Hardeman. Average is just five a game, but if they can get a big contribution from him on the inside, go a long way for Morrillton. Now the second shot is good. Boy, he is only a junior, and he's what they call over Morrillton a big old boy. Yes, he is. Morrillton switches to the 2-3 zone, giving Mills a different look. Here's King with the basketball. Goes back over to the top to Livingston. Can try to make something work in the lane. Goes right side. That's into Allen's hands. And we've got a whistle and a foul. It was gonna, it's an offensive foul against Mills. And so Morrillton's going to get the basketball back. But before we do, checking in is going to be Joseph Bell for the comments. Yeah, Livingston picks up his second personal foul. So that's big as he heads to the bench with 445 left here in the first half. Coach Cooper, not a fan of that call. 12 to 11 is our score. Morrillton on top as bringing it up for Morrillton's going to be Foster. He works it the right side in the hands of Hardeman now. To their big man, they kick it back over to Pinion. Down low they go. Now we've got another offensive foul as Henry Cowles now going to be called with the offensive foul. Yeah, very similar to the, the last possession, but they're going to say Cowles got him with the hook. Yeah. I think that's more of a flop. Yep. Not completely a make good call for the last possession, the offensive foul on the other end, but... It's still in consideration for it. 
Here's JV and Guy King as he works it back right side into the hands of Allen. Allen gives it off left side to Bell who puts up the shot, it's no good. Here comes Morrillton as Foster gonna walk the lane and he traveled. Oh. I think he may have hurt himself because yeah, camp a little gimpy. Little contact as he tried to split the double team. But he took too many steps. So here comes King for Morrillton as they give it off over to Allen. Bounce pass back to King on the championship logo. Under four to play here in the first half as Morrillton leads Mills 12 to 11. So back to King, now top of the King. Back over for three. It's too hard, and rebounds pulled in by Morrillton. Settling for the perimeter jump shot. You'd like to see Mills be a little more active, crashing the lane, trying to find a soft spot. Here's Foster, works the ball down low. It went right through the legs of Henry Cowles, and now here comes Mills. King, stop and pop at the free throw line. And he's able to give Mills a one-point lead. Evan Foster handling the duties at the point for Morrillton. Gets it down to Cowles. Double team comes. Another flop. And Cowles that time was able to take it up off the glass and give Morrillton a one-point lead. Yeah, I think the officials are going to probably stop calling those if the flops continue to happen because every time Cowles gets the basketball, you see a Mills defender to hit the deck. Flops are good if you use them sparingly, but if you go every possession, yeah. you're going to stop getting in the benefit of the doubt. Here's King with the basketball as they go right side to Guy King, but then back to King. We're over to 220 to play here in the first half. King's going to drive the right side, go up with the right hand, and he's going to give Mills another one-point lead. Back and forth. Two teams trading leads. Foster stands on the wing in front of the Mills bench. And go back right side to Williams for three from the wing, and he knocks it in. We haven't seen a three-pointer in a while, and Williams changed all that with a 17-15 lead now. Now here's Guy King going left baseline, puts up the left hand, it's no good. Offensive rebound and the putback. Nice second chance effort there by Joseph Bell. He's got five points and we're tied again. Already have 11 lead changes and five ties in this contest. It's not even halftime. A minute 28, here's Cowles, banks it off the glass. It's good, 19-17. 36, already passed his season average. Here's King, swings it back left side to Guy King for three. It's no good, rebounds pulled in by Morrillton. Pinion's got it as it was deflected away. Here's Pinion in the lane, and he's going to be called with the travel. And that'll take us to our media timeout. 19-17. Morrillton leads Mills with a minute two to play, and you're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. At Arkansas PBS, the value we provide our business sponsors is a powerful blend of community engagement, corporate philanthropy, and cause marketing. The PBS audience is loyal and selective, and our viewers choose businesses that support the station they love. A thriving public media station is an essential part of any healthy community, and sponsorship is a solid investment for you and your business. Join us in sponsorship and signal your values on Arkansas PBS. Now, more than ever, community is important. Local schools, businesses, and charities are in need of support. Each one of us can make a difference. When you volunteer, give, shop locally, or simply participate, you help support and grow your community. It makes us all stronger when we all are involved. I'm Susie Everett, Everett Buick GMC. We're proud to be a part of this wonderful community and want to encourage each of you to be involved in yours. We on that next level. We on that next level.
Halftime show with Steve Sullivan. Uh, we're going to meet real life inspiration, explore. I'm actually reading the wrong one. Dorian Crafts coming up. We'll re relive the final season of the Carver Cobras and visit with Daria Ford of the Magnolia Panthers. That's coming up on the Arkansas PBS halftime show. Once again, we've done 10 games. They, yeah. they, they have a tendency to run together. Well, I'm used to seeing Mills in that 5A title game. I guess I probably should get used to seeing him in the 4A title <laughs> yeah. game, too. <laughs> and Mills has the basketball as they go to the free throw line, lost the handle on it, gets it back into the hands of King. Down to 30 seconds to play here in the first half. Morrison defense extending it, now going back to that man-to-man, -man, really making things difficult for the Comets. Kendrick gives the ball back to King, down to 20 seconds. Guy King at the free three-point line. Going to drive in with a left hand, nice and he knocks take. it in. That's yeah. a great take by Guy King. Yeah, nice, strong finish with the left hand. Ties the game in the closing seconds. And we've got a double dribble on Morlton as with the violation was Darius Allison. So Mills could take the lead before the half with 5.1 seconds to play in the half. Guy King with the ball. Swings it right side. Here's a shot for three that's going to hit the shot clock. And that's going to do it. That shot was by Marcus Kendrick. And we're at the half where Morlton leads Mills 19, or excuse me, we've got a tie ball game 19-19. And you're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Hello and welcome to the Arkansas PBS Sports Halftime Show. I'm Dorian Kraft coming to you from the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame in North Little Rock. We'll have you back to the boys 4A championship shortly. In the 1969-1970 basketball season, with their school slated for closure at the end of the year, the Carver High School Cobras from Stevens, Arkansas, wanted one final run to leave their mark in the state tournament. Let's relive their story in this Emmy Award winning piece. Just absolutely everything. I'm Larry Banks, and I was a Carver Cobra for the school year 69 and 70, and then for Stevens High School in 71. We had a lot of discussions uh, around town about the schools were going to integrate. This was uh, the forced integration year, uh, 71. Most people in the black community lived on or around the hill that was on the other side of the, of the highway, and most of the white community lived closer to the railroad tracks that were, that were uh, on the other side. So literally the two high schools were probably no more than six or eight blocks apart, literally. I played for the Carver in 1969, 70 year, sophomore at the time. That's the only, that was the last year that we played over there. What was special about that team was the fact that uh, there was a bond that developed with that group over the summer leading into the school year. We knew the schools were going to integrate the next year. We wanted a special year. The, the blazing speed that they had was just, it was remarkable. I mean, you couldn't get from one end of the court to the other end of the court uh, uh, to, to attempt a shot. Uh, about half the time they'd already stole it from me and scored a point and then, now they steal it for me again. I've seen them steal it six or eight times uh, before anybody can make it past the half court line. It's pure excitement. We were up and down the floor. If you were not in shape, you couldn't play with us. We were in top shape. I had a couple of parents went to the superintendent on me because I was running them down the side of the road. Coach Cross was um, special. Coach Cross was the type of coach that allowed the team to be the team. He knew he had good players, and he basically allowed us to play. It seemed that everyone in Stevens was there, white and black. It was, it was rocking. Uh, people wanted to see this team carver. 
uh, the style of play, the character of play, the sportsmanship that we had. We got Greenbrier in the final. Because, see, they had the great big boy that went to Oklahoma State or somewhere, but Tulsa or somewhere. And I said, y'all notice how tired he get? We got to keep him moving. I pull Larry out to the wing. And so that brought him away from the goal. Now if we take a jump shot, I got a chance to get the rebound. And then he got tired. And when he got tired, we were ready to get back ahead again. And when we got back ahead, I said, uh, let's run that four corner. And he put that ball out there, and you come out there to get it, and you had to foul him. He makes free throws. Well, one thing I remember, we were a good free throw shooting team. When they fouled Ralph, I was laughing, and Ralph was laughing too. Because we made our free throws and won. They came out of those bleachers, and we were talking about a lot of people there. It was, it was just great. And then when we finally got settled down and got headed back, the fire department, sheriff department, met us at Washita County line, and they brought us on in. I'll never forget it like it was yesterday. It was cars and people all down the highway just waiting on us and yelling, you know, and we came through. Anyone could feel the pride that people from Stevens had, white and black, having won a state title. Everybody was excited about what, it, what about the accomplishment. What happened in 70 carried over into 71. When the schools came together, they were on a high as far as sports were concerned. Now, basketball was really the heart and the soul of Stevens during that time. So without a doubt, going into the school year 71, everybody was anticipating a great year in basketball. This is not a Stevens story. It's not just a basketball story. This is a story that all of Arkansas can relate to when it comes to integration how it happened, what happened, how it came about, the good, the bad, and the ugly. By the way, that was the first time some of those players had been in the old Carver gym since it closed in 1970, and the first time that they had held those trophies since their championship run. Their tournament record of 410 points still stands. All right, let's meet a current day student athlete looking to leave their mark on the game. RJ Hawk had the opportunity recently to catch up with Darian Ford out of Magnolia High. RJ, take it away. Thanks, guys. I'm excited to be joined by a star down in Magnolia, Arkansas. His name is Darian Ford. And Darian, thanks for, thanks for joining us. And I've got to ask, man, you know, you're talked about as one of the top basketball players in the state of Arkansas, and you're only a junior. How's it been kind of navigating the recruiting waters as well as getting ready for a season, all amongst being in a pandemic? Oh, well, I've just been enjoying the process. It really hasn't been a hard process, actually. Um, I've been able to put a lot of work in with my coaches, with my dad, and I've been building bum my teammates on and off the court. So everything's just been fine, even though we weren't able to play the last state championship game. But everything's been going great. You know, you talk about the working out with your dad. I know that you have a great relationship with your dad. Uh, what's he been like um, being able to not only be your dad, but kind of be your biggest supporter slash uh, essentially kind of a coach for you along this way, getting ready for this season? Um, my dad has been a great help. We, I think we bond more off the court than we do on the court. That's what makes it so special on the court. And my dad, he always pushed me to to the highest ability that I can go to. And I just thank him so much. And I couldn't say enough to my dad to let him know how much I thank him. What's that bond like with your teammates? I know that a lot of you guys play AAU ball together. You, 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 you kind of hang out during the off season together. What's that bond with your teammates like? Oh, we have a great, but I think that's what makes us so special on the court. Um, we go at each other at practice, but right outside of it, we're like the closest buddies and we can talk about anything. And I just love those guys. They're great players. Darren, man, I, I'm so glad we got to sit down and chat. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what the rest of your basketball career and what your future holds. And uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I pray you have a blessed day.
Guys, we've got a good one down in Magnolia, Arkansas. His name's Darian Ford. You want to keep an eye out for him because he's going to do some big things in the future. Back to you at the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you. Thanks, RJ. Continued success to Darian. To keep up with what's happening during the championship games and all the action at Arkansas PBS, log on to our new Engage app. You can download the app on the App Store or on Google Play. That's going to do it for the halftime show. Let's get you back to Bank OZK Arena for the second half of the boys 4A championship on your home for the high school state basketball finals. Arkansas PBS. Back here at Bank OZK Arena as we've got a tie ball game. Mills and Walton in the 4A Boys State Championship game. All knotted at 19 apiece. Let's take a quick look at those first half highlights that uh, there was plenty of them. I know that much because both these teams were high flying all over the court as Mills makes their way back onto the floor. It's not a lot of separation yeah. between these teams. Obviously, with a tie game, you expect the numbers to be pretty similar. Shooting percentage in the same range. Neither one of them turning the basketball over too much. Rebounds are about the same. Points in the paint exactly even. And as you might expect in a really close contest, 11 lead changes. And this game has been tied six different times. The largest lead of the game for any team, two points. Yeah, and it's, it's just been a back and forth affair and really Pinion's been involved. King right there, you see him. He got involved a lot. Uh, Javian Guy King got involved. I mean, it was it was not just one or two people. There was a lot of folks that got involved. And here's your halftime stats right now. Morlton shooting 41% while Mills 35. Not a very good three-point shooting day for either team as Mills is two of eight and Morlton's one of five uh, at the charity stripe. It is four of six for Morlton and one for two for Mills. Points in the paint exactly the same at 10. Walton has had eight turnovers in the game. Rebounds pretty much even as well, 14 to 12. And second chance points, which I thought that number might be a little bit higher because there's been a lot of putbacks and, mm -hmm. and offensive rebounds, but it's only two to one. Yeah, and the one thing that these two teams are getting are defensive stops when they need to. Only one time in the entire first half has a team scored back-to-back -back buckets. Yeah. And so that means there's been one run of four, and that's the only runs of the entire game. And that was when Moralton went from being down six to four and up eight to six. And so getting defensive stops, but also not being able to take advantage on the offensive end. In this second half, I really like to see Mills attack the lane a lot harder than they did in that first half. Whether it's Javion Guy King or Jakari Livingston, get something going offensively, attack the paint, force the defense to collapse, and you maybe find a, a wide open team in on the block. Well, Mills will have the basketball first as we start the second half. It's like starting from the start. You have a tie yeah. ball game, it's 19-19. 16 minutes to determine who's going to win the state championship, or maybe more. Here's Bell back over left side. They go to JV and Guy King for three. It's no good. And that'll be a foul on Jared Giddens. And for Giddens, that's his first personal foul. A little too aggressive. Attacking the window. Picks up the cheap foul. Alton going to work the ball up into that half court press by Mills. Now, depending in the front court. Left side, they work it to Allison. Allison bounce pass to the right side. That's over to Foster. Now to Hendricks, back top of the key. They work it over to Cowles. Back left side to Pinion. He's trying to find an opening in this defense. Mills has been so good at playing defense all year long as they work it down low on the baseline to Pinion. Spin move with the right hand, and he's able to make it go. Yeah, he had just four points in the first half for Joseph Pinion. Nice job to get him involved early in this third quarter. Bounce pass goes to the left corner. As making an acrobatic shot that time for Mills was Jakari Livingston. And it ties the game up once again. Yeah, that's what I was wanting to see out of him in this third quarter. Attack the rim. Now here's Hendricks. Wow. Look at that. He went from his knee and was able to make it go off the back of the glass. And the ball's going to go out of bounds as King never saw it coming at him, and it'll be a turnover. Moulton have the basketball back. Look at the English that he has to put on this to get the spin and to carry him off the window and finds a way through the net. Inbound's going to come for Moulton as we've got a whistle and a foul as King is going to be 
caught with another foul. Well, I say another, it's another team foul. It's his first personal. Mills just not given an inch defensively and charged with a kind of a touch foul there. Here's Pinion, left baseline, spin move, trying to do it all himself. Really good defense Had, there. Has it just knocked in the air, no foul. King comes down with it. Here's King, left side to Livingston. He goes up with the right hand, it's good. Tie ball game, 23 all. Javion Guy King kind of got rolled up and the body's falling on the other end of the floor. He's, he's up now, but he's holding his left leg. Now here's the bounce pass to Devin Foster. Into the front court goes Hendricks. Back to Pinion, left side. That's over to Allison. He'll go up with the right hand. It's no good. Coming down with the rebound is Guy King. Javion brings it in the front court. He'll work it, go try to go coast to close. He makes it go, and he's headed to the free throw line to shoot one. Yeah, nice strong take there. Brings it up, and as you mentioned, he starts it and he finishes it. Not able there to get over in time it was Devin Foster as he's hit with the blocking call, and Guy King has a chance to convert the three-point play. Free throw, free throws up and good, and it's now a three-point game, 26-23. Largest lead for either side. Still just a one possession contest though. Pinion with the basketball in the front court. They broke the press and Pinion just banks it off the glass. That was too easy. Yeah, defense kind of sagged off of him trying to take away Cowles and Pinion just does it himself. Molson finishes deflected. another turnover. Here goes Hendricks, right side, and he gives Molson the lead just like that. That three point lead quickly disappears as the Devil Dogs back out in front. With the ball for Mills is King. Goes back left side to Javian Guy King. And now we've got a whistle and a timeout charge to Mills with 5.13 to play here in the third quarter. Morlton on top of Mills, 27 to 26. Some more of what we saw in the first half, a little quicker pace. The shots are starting to fall with a little more regularity. Both teams really active going, attacking the middle of the defense. We thought we settled for too many jump shots in that first half. Really taking advantage of the athleticism on both sides of the floor. Getting out in transition for Moulton thanks to their defense. Here's a good look at Pinion as Guy King kind of gave way and the easy layup. Yeah, they, it was amazing that you had a three-point lead. Most teams will, may take them a while to, you know, to either tie it up or take the lead. And in a matter of 15 seconds, yep. Moulton had the lead. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's how this game's gone, though, RJ. I mean, you got 13 lead changes, eight ties, and still five minutes left in the third quarter. King's gonna swing the ball left side in the hands of Livingston. Back to King, now over to Guy King on the logo. They're just gonna work it back and forth. We're under five to play here in the third. Right side, they work to Parks. Now to Guy King with a bounce pass to Livingston on the baseline. He just throws it away. Tried to get it back out top side. And it was not going anywhere. His pinion now has it over to Foster on the left side. And there's a steal bar, attempted steal, and now a travel. Okay. Well, I say it's going to be a call to travel. He came out rolling his arms, but then he said there was a foul. And so they're going to call the foul on Jakari Livingston. And that's his second. Now here's a three by Hendricks. It's no good, and right there to save it from going out of bounds was Livingston. They work with a guy King into the front court. One point lead for Morrillton. King with the basketball in the lane and swatted away by Pinion. Here comes Morrillton, three on one break. Pinion right side, it's good. Nice job on the fast break, three on one, make the defender commit to one of them. Easy dish for Pinion. Now Guy King, right side of the paint, goes left side to King. He lost the handle on it briefly. We're under four to play here in the third. Back left side to Guy King. Three point lead for Morrillton. Puts in the hands of King. He stands in front of his own bench. Back down to Livingston. He puts up a shot, tried to go up, go up over Pinion. It didn't go. Now here comes Morrillton, working right side. Puts up the shot. We've got a blocking foul. It's good. 
Dylan Parks, excuse me, no, that's actually Allison who's going to make it go. And he'll enter the free throw line to shoot one. The foul, though, was, I believe, on Dylan. Another going to say is on Livingston. We've got a media timeout. 3.29 to play, third quarter. Morlton 31, Mills 26. And you're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Cherokee Nation, our people, our culture, our history, our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. John Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect. That's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. Here's that fast break, and they fixed the foul on the scoreboard. It was actually QJ King for Mills that got called with the foul on that, and here's the free throw for Morlton to give them their largest lead now as it's up and good. For a copy of this state championship game or any other one, go to mmproductions.net, place your order, and you can watch it over and over again. And how about this run by the Devil Dogs? Nine straight points. 32-26, 3.22 to play third quarter. Guy King with the basketball goes right side out to Parks. Back over to King on the wing. Swings it to the corner, here's Parks. Thought about pulling up and then pulled it back out. King, free throw line, now goes back to Parks in the corner. It's no good, and he gets his own rebound. Drives in, puts up the shot. It's no good. JV and Guy King's there to get the rebound. Ball goes out of bounds and stays with Mills. The zone for Moulton's really giving Mills a lot of problems. They're having to settle for long jump shots. It's not really their style, not really their forte. And they're making things difficult even if they do pull down an offensive rebound because there's so many bodies already packed in the lane. Coach Cooper is not happy that there was not any fouls called on that last set of rebounds. Now here's JV and Guy King. And he's going to give it down low to Livingston, and he banks it off the glass, and it's good. That's a nice job. You attack the center of that defense, force the zone to collapse on you, able to distribute the basketball, find an open teammate on the block. Well, Morlton, it's Foster bringing the ball up. He's on the... Right wing trying to work around a screen. Back over to Pena, swings it left side to Hendricks. Hendricks. Gonna slow things down as he gets it off to Cowles. Now goes right side to Foster for three. It's off the front of the iron, no good. Here comes Guy King with the basketball. JV and Guy King at the free throw line. Swings it right side to Parks in the corner. Now down low. They work it, that's into the hands of Larry Miller. And now here comes Pena with the basketball. And Cowell's got a hand on that one, altered the shot. Foster with it, under two to play here in the third. They go right side to Hendricks, Pinion to Cowles, down low, goes with the right hand and is able to make it go. Yep. He's just a big body. They don't have anybody to control him down low. Yeah, and I think Mills has got to get away from that. They're, they're trying to take the flop too much, guarding the big Cowles inside. Just try to play him straight up, make him shoot over you. A minute 38 to play. Here in the third quarter, 34-28, Morlton on top of Mills. I'm not sure their cows has made a move on the inside that didn't result in a Mills defender hitting the deck. Parks goes left side to Guy King. Now goes back at the top of the key to Parks. And he traveled with the basketball. Checking in the ball game for 
Mills is Joseph Bell, as well as Marcus Kendrick. Minute 18 to play here in the third as Foster's going to get it to Pinion and it's stolen away by Livingston. Livingston, and he's going to slam it home with two hands. Nice job by Livingston. He anticipated the pass to the interior of the, of the full court pressure, made the pick, and punched it with two. Now here's Hendricks back to Foster, under a minute to play in the third. Foster goes right side. That's into the hands of Pinion now, down to Cowles. And we've got a whistle. And a foul down low. They're going to call that foul on Livingston with yeah. a little shove in the back of Cowles. So Get for Livingston, that's his third personal foul as Cowles gets the inbound pass and sticks it up and in. It was a catch and shoot for Cowles. And it's 36 30. Here's Guy King for three, and he answers. Big response triple there for Guy King. We haven't seen too many jump shots go down for the Comets. But that was a big one. Closes the gap to three. Pinion with 30 seconds to play in the third. Goes left side, has it stolen away. Taken by King. Right side to Livingston with a left hand. It's a one point game. Defense leading the offense for the Comets. Is their full court pressure starting to bother Moulton? Here's Pinion in the lane with a right hand. We've got a blocking foul down low. And it's got over a little too late. It's Pinion. It's already near the basket. Defender jumped in front, but too late to get the call. That was QJ King who got called with the blocking foul. And so Pinion's going to head to the free throw line. For King, that's his third personal foul. And now Pinion's going to head back to the line where today he's not been at the charity stripe so far. He's got 10 points. Quiet 10 if you want to call it that. Free throws up and good. Does, though, have seven in this quarter. How about Cowles coming in off the bench with 10 points? And he's just been a dominant force down low. Yeah, I thought he was going to need a big, big contest. His Mills has the side kind of across the front court. They're going to need a contribution from Cowles, and he's played extremely well. Second free throws up and good. 38-35, 10 seconds to play in the third. Here's King. Bounce pass goes left side to Giddens. Now Pena's going to steal it away, and who are they going to say it's on? They're going to talk it over. They're going to say Moralton basketball. Pena did a great job right here. Look at this. He bounces it off of Guy King, and it goes out of bounds. And now with four seconds, here comes Moralton. Pinion in the front court. Pinion pulls up for three. Fade away. It's no good. And we head to the fourth quarter. Moralton 38, Mills 35. We've got a good one in store for you. Don't tune that channel away to anything else because the fourth quarter is coming up next as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships in Arkansas PBS Sports. Now, more than ever, community is important. Local schools, businesses, and charities are in need of support. Each one of us can make a difference. When you volunteer, give, shop locally, or simply participate, you help support and grow your community. It makes us all stronger when we all are involved. I'm Susie Everett, Everett Buick GMC. We're proud to be a part of this wonderful community and want to encourage each of you to be involved in yours. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why, at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. You can ex experience the action all over again next week and watch all the championship games at youtube.com slash Arkansas PBS. Well, you're definitely going to want to go next week to Arkansas PBS on YouTube and watch this one because we've had a barn burner here at Banco ZK Arena. 
Kind of how this one ex we expected it, RJ. Yeah. Only one foul, though, in that third quarter on Moralton. And you know Coach Raymond Cooper is going to be in the officials' ears about that one. Now here's Darius Allison as they work the ball in the front quarter. His pinion's got it top of the key. Back over right side. That's into the corner to Foster for three. It's too long, but rebound's taken in by Allison. Allison back to Foster. Over top of the key to Hendricks. Walton slowing it down just a little bit. As Foster will have it left side. With the basketballs, Allison. Now it's stolen away, taken by Livingston. Yeah, bad pass there by Moralton, but he got lucky as Livingston could control the, the bounce. Dribbled it off his own leg. So Moralton will have the basketball back with 7-12 to play in this one. 38-35. Bounce pass goes to Hendricks on the wing. Back top of the key, they go over to Foster. Under seven to play now. Foster drives left baseline, takes it with the left hand. It's no good. Ball goes out of bounds and stays with Moralton. Yeah, Foster hasn't been able to get going offensively. Hasn't tried to force it too much. Does have three rebounds and two assists, but yet to get in the scoring column. Inbound pass comes to Cows. That's He'll drive. Fake. He'll put it up with a left right hand. And there's a fingertip roll that gives Moralton a five-point lead. Really nice use of the shot fake there. Put it on the hardwood and able to find the nylon. Here's Livingston. Gets his own rig. Excuse me, no, that's not Livingston. That's actually Bell. Joseph Bell who was able to get his rebound and put it back up. And it's 40-37. to 37. Right side goes Hendricks down to Cowles. Cows with the right hand. It's no good. Ball's saved from going out of bounds by Guy King. Yeah, Here, good defense, but forced it a bit. Here's a floater in the lane. We've got a whistle and a charge. Yeah, Foster is set up in the lane. Mills tried to slow the attack. But they're going to get Javion Guy King as he collided with Foster. Wave off the bucket. It's a big momentum shift back to the Devil Dogs. I mean, Bobby, that, that almost seems like a really easy call. Uh, yeah, he was set up uh, with the momentum of Guy King just carried it into Foster. Now here's Allison who goes up, and he's fouled, and he'll head to the free throw line to shoot two. That's a big collision there. Tried to go for the block. we got more of Allison. He throws up and off the front of the iron, no good. There's a look at Keith Zachary for Moralton. Tell Allison that many missed many days in the gym. Oh. That jersey stretching out across that back. Second one's up and good, and now we've got a timeout charge to Moralton. Last state title for Moralton was in 1991. They're trying to take down the champs as Mills was the co-champion last year and won a state championship in 2017. If Moralton gets the job done, you can't question the run they had. They took down both of the co-champs. Obviously, Magnolia in the semis. And then would they be crowned champions? Obviously, we'll have to get through Mills here in the championship game. 5.52 to play in this one. It's 41-37, Moralton. This game has just been nip and tuck the entire way. You got a feeling it's going to come down to one or two key moments in the first three or four minutes. That's going to decide this one. Here's Giddens with the basketball as he gives it off to Livingston, top of the key. Livingston going to take in the lane. Left hand puts it up. It's good. And he's going to hit the free throw line to shoot one. Nice job by Livingston. I like the play out of the timeout from Coach Cooper. Try to get the most explosive player going towards the basket. And Livingston able to create. 
and complete. That foul was on Kevon Moore from Moralton. That's his second personal foul. And the free throw is no good. Rebound's taken by Pinion, and he'll get it out to Foster. Excuse me, that's Allison. Allison's got the ball in the front court now. Back left side, they work it over to Foster. Allison swings it to Moore, back over to Foster on the left wing now. Over to Pinion. Approaching the five minute mark in this one. Here's Hendricks in the lane, nice cut, puts up a shot, and it's gonna be an offensive foul. A little out of control from Hendricks. We've seen Mills is not afraid to step in front, try to take a charge, and finally got the call there. Forty-one thirty-nine, Moralton on top of Mills. Here's Livingston. Excuse me, no, that's not Livingston, that's Bell. And it's taken away by Hendricks. Hendricks trapped in the corner and stolen away by King. Here's Guy King, left side to Bell. He lays it off the glass. It's good. We've got a tie ball game, 41 all. Yeah. When Mills is at their best. They're creating havoc near the half court line. The run and jump forced another turnover. Let's see if Moulton has an answer for it. Left side into the hands of Hendricks. Into the corner. Now it goes back top side to Foster. Foster on the wing. Left side, they work it into the hands of Allison. Back over to Pinion, now swings it right side to Hendricks. Hendricks gonna pull up for three. It's off the back of the iron, no good. Ball's gonna be, well, there's gonna be a foul, and it's gonna be charged to Darius Allison, and for Allison, that's his second personal. Two Mills players look to collide with each other. One of them hit the deck. That was Livingston, but it was Allison who gets hit with the personal foul. I don't really, I didn't see the foul there. But there may have been something on the back side. Yeah, Moulton's fourth team foul. Mills has eight in this second half. 41-41, here's a he alley-oop. They just threw it down to take the lead. Jakari Livingston is taking over in this second half. He's got 12 after halftime. Here's Foster over to Pinion. Pinion in the lane, works it right side to Hendricks. Back down to Pinion. He puts up the shot. It's in and out, no good. And it's taken by Mills. Here comes King into the front court. And we've got a whistle of foul. And that's going to go against Darius Allison. That'll be his third personal foul. And that'll take us to the media timeout. 3.33 to play in this one. Mills, 43, Moralton, 41. And you're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. Coronavirus isn't over. Let's wear face masks in public. Stay six feet or more from others. Follow state and local guidelines and wash our hands frequently. Let's move forward together. Learn more at coronavirus.gov.
Without you, Arkansas PBS Sports would not be possible. So consider becoming a member to support Arkansas high school sports. Do it today at myarkansaspbs.org. Here's Guy King for three. It's no good. King's right there to come in and get the rebound. Back to Guy King, and he puts it up and good. Nice job by maybe the smallest player on the floor, and King gets the offensive put rebound. This is off of the putback. Four-point game. As Allison brings it up, gives it off to Foster. 8-0 run over the last two and a half minutes. Foster on the right wing. Going to give it to Pinion. Pinion works right side. Worked around the screen, puts it up with the right hand. No good, gets his own rebound and banks it off the glass. It's good. Pinion's got 14. Good, strong answer and good, strong move there by Pinion to shut down that 8-0 run. Two-point game with 2.45 to play. Late the basketball is King. Going to work it right side to Giddens. Bounce pass to Guy King. Swings it to the right corner. This time to Bell for three, no good. Guy King gets the rebound, puts it up. It's blocked by Cowles. And here's Allison now into the front court. They work it left side and throw it out of bounds. Tried to get it to Hendricks, worked a little too fast, and he threw it over to the bench of Morlton. They couldn't take advantage of it, but how well has Cowles played on the inside as Morlton's going to take a timeout? He came off the bench. We knew he was going to have to come in and perform. 12 points, two rebounds, a few block shots. The big man, 6'9", is playing well. Looking over that Morlton bench right now. Coach Keith Zachary. Trying to calm his guys down as they trail by two points with 2.17 to play in this one. That 8-0 run gave Mills their largest lead of the game, which was just four points that lasted exactly one possession. They'll have a two-point lead. These, these two teams have just ex exchanged blows since the opening tip. The stat sheet still almost identical with the exception of the bench points. Morlton's gotten 16 points from the reserves, while the Comets have nothing. So here comes the Mills Comets. Guy King has the basketball in the front court. Works it back to King. Now left side they go to Giddens. Giddens puts it up with the left hand. It's no good. Guy King's right there to put it back up. And he's fouled, and he'll head to the free throw line to shoot two. Yeah, nice job by Mills attacking the offensive glass, giving themselves a second chance opportunity. Now they're going to take advantage of the foul line. Both teams going to be in the bonus moving forward, but this is a shooting foul. Here's the free throw up and good. Mills has not committed a personal foul this quarter. It was 8-2 coming into the fourth. Now it's 8-6. 46-43. Mills on top of Morlton. We've had 14 lead changes in this ball game as the second free throw is up and good. 19 now for Guy King. So Morlton with the basketball down by four. As Foster's going to bring it up. Foster works it over to Hendricks. Back right side to Foster. Trying to get it to Pinion. Pinion's going to pull up for three. It's an air ball. It goes right in the hands of Livingston. Down to a minute 35 left here in the ball game as they give it over to Guy King. And now he's going to call a timeout. And it'll be a full timeout charge to Mills with a minute 29 to play. 47 to 43. been a heck of a ball game, Bobby, and you know, we've got later today will be the 5A game that's going to feature another really good contest as we will have Jonesboro and Maumel. Should be a good one. Maumel just dominates on the glass, out rebounding their opponents by more than 20 per contest. We've got a minute and a half left in this one. Mills basketball, you don't have to foul just yet if you're Morrison, but if someone who gets the basketball in their hand that you think may be a substandard free throw shooter, maybe you give up the hack and send them to the line for the one-on-one. -on -one. 
Davion Guy King, 17 points, nine rebounds. Livingston, 17 points, five rebounds for Mills. Flip it over from Morrillton. Pinion's got 14 points and five rebounds. Six of 15, though, from the floor. Pretty evenly matched contest. But we'll see who can make the plays in the final 90 seconds. A minute 29 to play. 47-43. The inbound's going to come from Joseph Bell in front of the front court, or in front of the scorer's table. We'll give it off to Guy King. See how long Morlton is willing to wait before they have to give up the foul. That goes King on the right side, puts in the hands of Bell. Now back to Guy King. And now we've got a whistle and a foul, and that's going to go against Foster. It's going to send Guy King to the stripe. He's three of three. That's the second personal foul on Foster. Now coming back in the game is going to be Hendricks and Cowles. First free throw is up and no good. It's a big miss. So you've got a four-point game, a minute and nine to play. Here's Foster. Into the front court, gets it to Hendricks. Back right side to Pinion in the corner. Over to Hendricks, down under a minute to play now. They work it down to Cowles. Cowles is fouled as he was going up with a shot. And so Cowles will head to the free throw line to shoot two. Yeah, he's been so good inside, they get it into him. And an immediate double team, but Cowles works quickly. He gets hit on the arm. He's already two for two from the foul line. And for Livingston, that's his fourth personal foul. First free throws up and good. Well, he's got a good stroke, doesn't he? He does. A lot of times you wonder how the big men shoot. We've seen some really good underclass big men in the state tournament, state finals. Khalil Ware comes to mind. He's got a nice smooth stroke from North Little Rock, seven footer. Second shots in the air and it's no good. And the rebound is taken by Morlton. They're going to call a timeout. What an effort there by Foster. Able to not only go up and higher than the defensive rebounder, but able to lay out, get his hands on the basketball and calls a timeout. The, the basketball IQ of both these two teams is just really impressive. As you see right there, calling for the timeout, had possession. And so now you've got a three-point game with Morlton having the basketball. And what that does for you, RJ, is it gives you the luxury of really picking your poison. You can go off, you can go for a two, or you can go for a three if you get a good clean look. Now, for those that can't see the stats at home, Morlton is one of 11 from the three-point line today. Yeah. <laughs> that's 9%. Not, not a very good shooting day at the, the three-point line. Yeah, that's, that's a little surprising. The team that's been pretty consistent from deep including Joseph Pinion, who's 0 for 5 from long range. So the shot's not falling, and maybe that's not having the luxury of getting the shoot around. I haven't seen a ton of three-pointers go down in the finals. But you've been able to warm up pregame, warm up in the half and halftime. Now almost four full quarters of playing in this arena. No more excuses. Just got to go out and make some shots, make some plays. Okay, so we've got 51.7 .7, 51 seconds left here in the game as Pinion's going to inbound it. Going to get it to Hendricks. Almost had it deflected away by Livingston. And work it back left side to Foster. Good tight defense by Mills, making life difficult for Morrillton. Now here's Pinion. Pinion in the lane, goes up with the right hand. It's good. One point game. And Morton quickly takes a timeout. If we can cue up that replay, watch the jab step from Pinion. He jabs right, and that creates just enough space. He's able to create a seam for himself and go left hand. Here's a look at it. Really nice job by Pinion creating for himself and able to finish in the lane. It's that little jab step right there. Got King on his heels, allowed for the blow by. 
And we've talked about it time and time again. He's committed to the University of Arkansas. And boy, the Hogs are going to be getting a good one, that's for sure. Yep. Even though his his three-point game not strong today, 0-5, he's finding a way to create things going towards the basket. 7 of 11 inside the arc for Pinion. So he's finding new ways to get points on the board. And more importantly, he's doing it when it matters most. He has 12 points in the second half. 47 to 46. What do you think's being said in that comment huddle right now? Well, what you got have to do is one, get the inbounds pass. You know Moulton's going to come out with full court pressure. And once you do get it in, you got to get be, be sure to get the ball into good free throw shooter's hands. Because you never know when Moulton is going to go for the run and jump or go ahead and give up the foul. So step one, get the ball in play. Get it across the timeline and then get it to a good foul shooter. Joseph Bell's going to inbound it for Mills. Going to work it in now as he gets it over to Ve over to Guy King and he was fouled. They gave up that foul pretty quickly. I thought they had a chance to trap Guy King over on the sideline. They went ahead and gave up the personal. Guy King today is three of four from the free throw line. Yeah, missed his last attempt though. That's what kept it at a four-point game. Guy King, though, 19 points today. He's been huge for the Comets. Those shots up and good. Same thing for Morrillton here. Even if Guy King makes it, you've got a chance. If you go for two, if you can get into the lane. Second shot's up and good. Makes it a three-point game. Smooth stroke, both of those. 32 seconds to play. Here's, Here's Foster. Got, got to get it across the timeline. Dangerous pass there. Gets it to Pinion. Back to Foster. Down to 20. Hendricks has it on the right wing. Back over to Cowles. Walton got to be a little more Cowles aggressive. To Pinion. Down to 10. Pinion going to pull up for three, and it bounces no good. Rebound still out there. It's going to be taken by Mills, and Mills is going to repeat his champions. A great job defensively on that final possession for Mills. Moulton had to work for every pass on that possession. A decent look from Pinion, the player you want taking that shot, but it was off the mark and Mills gets their third championship in five years back to back, but this one's gonna be special because they got the winning on the floor. 49-46, your final score. Mills wins it over Morrillton. Shot by Pinion, a little step back three from beyond the college three-point arc. Just off the mark, kind of really how the day went for Morrillton from beyond the three-point line. Finished the game just one of 12. They had a good look and their best player's hands and just didn't go down. What a, what a job Ray Cooper's done yeah. at Mills. I mean, you know how hard it is to get the one championship game, let alone five in yeah. a row, and then you do it in the middle of a pandemic. And with everything that happened to him after he he lost his son this year this one means a lot to him yeah, you can see the emotion there from coach raymond cooper well deserved got a really good team and what i think what impressed me most about this mill squad is they never really panicked when morrillton would make a run they would get to the lane they knew what their strength was they got away with uh, from it a few times settled for too many jump shots but between Javion Guy King and Jakari Livingston, they made a living in the paint. 32 points in the paint for Mills. It's always fun seeing champions crowned. And, you know, you, you hate it for a team like Morrillton, who's super talented. But a guy like Joseph Pinion, who's only a junior, uh, you know, he'll be back and... They'll, they'll be okay moving forward, but 
Boy, what a talented group of Mills Commons. Yep, they were close. We'll talk more about them and talk with Coach Cooper. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships in Arkansas PBS Sports. Conversation about race. Follow along with best-selling author Igioma Aluo and A-State professor Dr. Sharice Jones-Branch as they examine what talks about race don't have to be and share tools for having hard conversations. So you want to talk about race, an 18-part digital series. Watch more black stories on air or stream online. And the comments have been announced as champions and Livingston has been named our MVP of the finals. And we're just waiting on Coach Cooper and Livingston to make their way back over here to chat with us about today's game. And boy, Bobby, I, this is uh, this was a fun one to call. This it was. I mean, might have been one of the more fun games we've seen all weekend. I mean, what made this a great basketball game is both teams made runs almost at the same time. They never allowed the other team to get out to a big lead. I believe six was the largest advantage of the entire game, and that was with Morrillton. But Mills made the big plays late as Jakari Livingston is going to make his way over here for the interview, and it just made the plays that matter the most. So we're joined by Jakari Livingston now, and Jakari, boy, I mean, it, you guys made it come down to the final play, and okay. what was kind of going through your mind as they were getting ready to make that three-point attempt? Man, it was crazy. I just, I'm a senior. We worked too hard to get here. We couldn't let's let it go all along, go this game. We had to go get it and dig down. We do this a lot. This one was back and forth, the largest lead for either team, six points. What can, what's it like to be in a game that's that tight from start to finish? It's, I'm not going to lie, it's kind of scary. It's intensity. <laughs> this is my last game. I didn't want to let my team down. I told them I was going to give them 100% on and off the court, so that's what I tried to do. How hard has this year been on you guys with the COVID stuff going on, not knowing if you're going to play each and every week? You went through a really tough state tournament. What's this year been like for you? It's it been kind of rough because, I mean, it's a lot of times where we couldn't get practice in. We always do two practices a day, and we got to be prepared. We, we uh, every every practice, we got to be prepared, and that's what we try to do. But COVID, be, we be having to leave the gym sometimes, so we be mad and unprepared sometimes. <laughs> 7 of 13 from the floor, 17 points, 6 rebounds, MVP. Yes, you got to be feeling pretty good right yes, now. Sir. It feels good, man. It feels good. Well, hey, go congratulate. Go uh, celebrate with your team. We hey. appreciate it. And uh, what a great game. Thank you. Congratulations. Jakari Livingston joining us here. And, Played uh, well. Man, this, I mean, really no holes in his game, to be quite honest. Really good on the defensive end of the floor. Can score the basketball. Yeah, and, I mean. Man. And, and it's just a do-it-all player for this basketball. Yeah. And, look, nothing should be taken away from Guy King, and because Agreed. what what he what he did in this basketball game is it could have been MVP performance. Yeah, there, there's no question about it. They've got two really good players, and you know if they choose to do so, I think some college, whether it's in state or out of yeah. state, can get two really good players from those guys from Mills. On the other side for Morlton, I mean, we talked about how good Pinion is, how big Cows is. They're both underclassmen. Yeah, they got a chance to come back, run it back, maybe get here to Hot Springs. They played really well. Big confidence boost. They didn't get the job done. Didn't shoot it well from the perimeter, but that, that's a quality team. They beat Magnolia in the semifinals to get here. Is it today? They just weren't the better team. Well, and, and if you think back to Morlton last year, they lost to this Mills team in the quarterfinals. I mean, yeah. they, they've had a history with this Mills team, and now you you face off in the in the state finals. You can only get better. Yeah, and, and, and really, with so, so much young talent coming back for them, what they can rely on, experience. Yeah. Mills is here every year. Those seniors have been here three times now, four times, and now you're looking at a team or in a roster in Morrillton with some youth that can come back and have experience of playing in this arena and maybe get it back here. Well, Coach Cooper's making his way over to chat with us, and – here he is right now. Coach Cooper, boy, I tell you what, you, you guys, I'm going to start calling you the cardiac kids after that game. Oh, yeah, we're going to make it interesting. I guarantee you that. It doesn't matter who we play. We're going to make it interesting. I, I looked over at one point, and there, after about the fourth or fifth the offensive foul, you just kind of rolled your eyes and walked off. I mean, but that's the type of intensity yeah, that was well, on the floor. Well, we've done it so many times. I think we had seven offensive fouls 
against uh, the last game against Blyville. Yeah. And I keep telling them, hey, man, if a guy's in front of you, don't run over him. I don't know how to make it more <laughs> any simpler than that. I mean, well, this game was tight start to oh, finish. Yeah. The largest lead for either side was when Moralton went up 32-26. Mm -hmm. What would you tell your team at that point to get them to settle down and to finish so strongly? Well, we were not really taking care of the basketball. We were forcing balls into places, turning it over, and we really need to be patient in our sets. And once we settled down in, in our half-court set, and then we wanted to get some in transition because we knew that that was our advantage. They're a big physical team, and that bothered us. But, you know, we need to get in the passing lanes a little bit. We got a couple steals, got in transition. We got our full-court press going a little bit. You know, we say handle pretty good, but, it, 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 you know, we had 19 points at halftime. That's right. And I said, guys, we can't win this game with 38 points. So we're going to have to, you know, Increase the uh, tempo. I know it's been a tough year for you. Mm -hmm. What's this? What's this? I mean, the feeling. What's it feel like right now? You know, closing it out with the state championship. Yeah, this has been a tough year. You know, I ain't gonna talk about that. Yeah. Uh, when you think about your program, in the finals, five yeah. years in a row. Last year you got to share a title. This year you got yeah. to win it on this court. Now three championships in five years. Let's talk about the program that you've built. Yeah, we were under 500, so we had to do something. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're 500 up, and uh, I've been teasing them all year. I said, you didn't win it on the court. You're not real champions. Yeah. You're paper champions. You know, I've been saying that in practice, and I know it's been under their skin. Yeah. So I'll probably figure in a few minutes they're going to give me a hard time about yeah. that. You might call them paper champions, but you're going to get a real ring. Oh, yeah, now we get a real win. Yeah. Now we're the real champions. Love now. it. Coach Cooper, thanks for the time, and thank congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Well done, sir. All right. That is Coach Cooper. Let's take a look at our final stats of the ball game. And Bobby, um, I mean, it's almost compared. It's almost the same across the board. Yeah. But really, you know, Moralton got to the free throw line a little bit more in this one. They both shot almost exactly the same, almost the exact same turnovers. I mean, it was as it was as even in this game as it really could have been. Yeah. I mean, uh, maybe the second line is the only one you could point to yeah. that said that was the difference. Mills finds a way to knock down two additional three-pointers. But, I mean, it was just a good, tight contest, really good offensive execution, really good yeah. defensive execution. And, and Mills eked it out between two quality teams. And as Coach just said, they're no longer paper champions. They're real 4A state champions. Uh, that's a great line, by the it way. It is, absolutely. I, I didn't even think about that. Well, hey, it was a fun one. 49-46 is our final score in the 4A boys championship game. We'll have more state championship action coming up throughout the day. So you want us to keep it locked right here on Arkansas PBS Sports. But for Bobby Swafford, I'm RJ Hawk. You've been listening and watching to the 4A state championship game brought to you by Centennial Bank on Arkansas PBS Sports.